Hey, it's me, Peter. Welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Now, today I'd like to talk about prayer. And of course, prayer is a deeply personal thing. We all pray differently. Some people pray at night. Some people pray first thing in the morning. Some people pray when, when we're at work, when they're with friends, family. Some people like to pray alone. Uh, it's a deeply personal thing and our, our prayer lives are not always consistent. They go up and down. It sort of fluctuates depending on what mood we're in, depending on how busy we are, what we're doing. And God understands this. OK, uh, I'd like to ask the viewer three questions. Why should we bother praying at all? How should we pray and what should we pray about? Now, my personal answers to those three questions are this. Remember to comment down below about this, OK? Uh, we should pray simply because Jesus Christ himself prayed. And it's not so much about what prayer does for God. It's about what prayer does to us. Prayer changes us from the inside out. As we humble ourselves and yield ourselves to God's spirit and to his, and to his word, the Bible, we get transformed. Now, everyone's in different circumstances and different situations. With me, it's been loneliness and depression. I lack of friendship and I lack of uh, relationships throughout my life. Uh, so yeah, that is probably, uh, I mean, there are one or two other things that are getting to me in my life, but it's those two things and it's all too easy to become cynical and to think, oh, I'm, you know, I've had enough of this, but you know, something about God's Holy Spirit is that even our groans, even when we don't know what to say, even when we don't feel like praying, if we make an effort and say, oh Lord, help me, I've had enough, please Lord, help me. He reacts to that. His Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So we should pray because Jesus Christ of Nazareth prayed. That's why we should pray. <laughs> OK, uh, if we're not praying as Christians and it goes on for days, weeks, months, slowly but surely we'll become spiritually weaker and weaker, more open to attack from Satan. Uh, we need to have the, on the full armour of God. And even when we do have uh, that, that full armour of God on, it's difficult because Christians are the number one target in the second heaven when it comes to spiritual warfare. Not so much unbelievers. Unbelievers, what the enemy likes to do is carry on distracting them, whether it's with the pride of life, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, uh, doing anything and everything possible to stop that person from becoming a believer, whether it's atheism, agnosticism, a false god, a false religion or whatever. Anyway, how we should pray is up to us. We all can pray differently. Sometimes... Um, a uh, hymn box can be a prayer. Sometimes we can uh, we can read other people's prayers that have been written in books as well. And there's lots of apps that you can download on your mobile phone, which will which will give you different prayers to pray. But but how, how I like to pray personally is to um, is to just speak to God in my own words, and I like to pray the Our Father prayer, which is of course Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us for this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive all those who trespass against us and lead us all away from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, uh, now I noticed that when I was sitting in church today, not only did everyone say amen instead of amen, I've always said amen instead of amen, literally the only one in my church who says that. I also, I'm also the only one in the church who says, deliver us all from the evil one. That's how you should say it, because he's our real, he's our, our adversary, although most people say what they mean the same thing, there's no point in quibbling about it, but, it, but there's an important distinction there. Okay. Anyway, yeah, uh, but third but not, but not least is, um, so I've spoken about why we should, because of Jesus, how we should. We all pray differently. There's no uh, uh, improper way of praying. Uh, and then there's, um, what, what, what was it, a third reason? What we should pray about? What should we pray about? And that could be about anything. We could pray about the big things like worldwide starvation and hunger, all those countries that are being battered by climate change, heavy rainfall, uh, hurricanes. Uh, we could pray about the homeless, about everyone who's being badly affected by this financial crisis, all those who have terminal diseases. We should pray for all the Satanists, anything and everything. You know, sometimes people write prayer lists about um, what to pray about. 
okay, and, and be, 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 keep reciting the same prayers every day. I've never done that personally, but I'd love to hear from anyone down below in the comment section about how you yourself pray and how you like to pray. Again, singing and uh, even reading out the Bible can be prayers. Remember that video I did about, about uh, journaling as we read the Bible? As we read the Bible and write our own thoughts into, into what we're reading and we try to understand scripture better and, and we try and relate it to our own lives um that can be prayer too okay um so yeah before i end the video i'll be reading 10 verses about prayer now listen to this carefully i'll start with philippians 4 6 do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. Now, life doesn't always make this easy. We get depressed. In my case, we get lonely. Some people have financial problems. Some people have uh, terminal diseases. Some people are in a bad way uh, with their mental health. Um, if there's anything you want me to pray about, by the way, definitely tell me down below in the comments section. I'd love to pray for anyone. Any prayer requests, send them my way. Uh, yeah, so now we're on to James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. But that's reminded me of something. Sometimes it's not so much that prayer isn't powerful, but we lack the belief and faith in prayer. And we can lose patience. And, and this world's got a way of distracting us because of how busy a lot of people are. And we can lose faith in the power of prayer. A lot of people say, well, God, God knows what I'm going to say before it even comes out of my mouth. What's the point of praying? What's the point? Because he already knows everything. A lot of people have that attitude and they, they can become cynical and think, well, well, it's all in God's hands. But yeah, it's true that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And he doesn't always take us out of our problems. He doesn't always wave a magic wand and say, oh, uh, OK, Peter, I'm going to give you everything you want in your life so that you won't be depressed or lonely anymore, so that you won't be struggling so much mentally and emotionally. No, he won't do it. He won't do it because he uses our painful situations and our struggles in order to strengthen us and to help us become stronger as Christians. And even now, as I'm doing this video, I can feel this sort of like wave of negativity go over me. But it's when we do videos, it's when we go to church, when we don't feel like going to church, we're doing a service to God. Sometimes we have to do things like we don't feel like doing. You know, there's an old saying about when the going gets tough, the tough get going. But those who are really tough are those who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who rely on him through thick and thin. Uh, now we're on to 1 John 1, 9. Yeah? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So if we go to him in prayer and mention our sins to him and come clean about as many things as we can, then he'll, he'll recognise it and says, well, OK, this guy's ill or, or, or this lady is guilty of this, that and the other, but, but he wants help, he's repenting of it, I'm going to stick with this guy and help him get through it. And of course, forgive him. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 12. Of course, don't forget that Christians, those who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, are under a constant state of grace and forgiveness, don't forget. But prayer is a part of that. So now we're on to Jeremiah 29, 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. God is always listening. Even when we're at our lowest depths of despair, he's always listening to us. Always. He never turns a deaf ear to those who turn to him. Um, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Now, this is an interesting one. So let me say it one more time. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. With the power of his Holy Spirit, he lets us know things that most other people may not know about, even other Christians within the congregation. And that reminds me, when it comes to prayer, a great way of doing it is to, if, you've got, if you're fortunate enough to have friends in Christ to actually go to places with, then prayer groups are a great idea and walking the streets, praying for your neighbourhood, praying for your street praying for your friends and family, Pray. What I like to do is this. I like to pray for this entire generation and every generation to come globally about anything and everything that's on my heart and mind. And then I mention everyone who's ever entered into my heart and mind in any way whatsoever, like the whole past, present and future of my life, for the sake of their whole lives, we must not limit 
God's power. Sometimes I even say to God, Lord, whatever prayers and interceding and supplications I've done in the past, keep using those prayers and interceding and supplications. Please use everything that's ever weighed on my mind and heart for the sake of everyone who's ever mattered to me and everyone around the world, for all the billions of people all over the world, you know? Until his return, and indeed until after his return, if needs, because a lot of our prayers and interceding supplications, not everyone realises this, but they are useful and powerful even after his return to the earth, because sin won't be done away with straight away, uh, after his, his grand return to the earth, which everyone will see on the earth. Uh, now, we'll, we're now we're on to Luke 6, 27 to 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. Right, now this is extremely hard to do. It depends how much of an enemy it is, but it says love your enemies. That doesn't mean say we need to be on speaking terms with them, but we should love them inwardly, even though they may not be our cup of tea and we may not see eye to eye. Uh, we need to love them anyway, you know, because whether we like it or not, they were made after God's image and likeness and Jesus died for them like he died for you. He lets his reign fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. Yeah. And it says, do good to those who hate you. There are going to be people in life who hate you. There's been people in my life who I've disliked with such intensity. But nonetheless, we should be trying to do good to those who hate them. Obviously, obviously as Christians, we shouldn't be hating anyone. But given my loneliness and depression all my years, there have been days, many days, when I felt like not being here anymore. And that's caused me to resent next door neighbour sometimes. There's a guy who lives next door to me to my right who I've never got on with. He's lived next door to me for over 10 years now. I'm not going to go into it in this video or in any video for that matter because it's with God. I've left it all with him. It's not like he's a particularly noisy neighbour. There are times when he's a little bit noisy, but that's not really what it is. But yeah, that's just one example. I mean, we're all in different situations. Many of us will have neighbours, friends, family and work colleagues who we fell out with and we don't get on with. So we need to keep a sense of perspective. Ultimately, all these negative thoughts, feelings and emotions we have about our neighbours, friends, family, work colleagues, whoever it might be. It could be someone in the church even. In the end, it won't count for anything because Jesus is the judge of everybody. We're not put on this earth as Christians to hold grudges against people. But nonetheless, God recognises when we're put in trying, challenging circumstances and he helps us out. Um, and then it says here, bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Now on to Matthew 6.6. 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to do that later on after I've done this video because there's a lot of things that are on my mind, okay? Um, and you'll find that as you as you ye yield yourself to God and as you pray and intercede and repent, he will work in your life in subtle ways. Just today when I was at the Salvation Army Church, uh, this old friend of mine uh, asked me uh, if, if I could help him once a week. And I said, well, okay, then I'll try it out. It's something to do with pamphlets because he likes to hand out pamphlets onto the street. So I'm going to try that out. You see the little subtle things he does in order to give us a sense of purpose, in order to help us out, in order to help us spread our wings a bit. You know, it depends what our situations are. But in my case, I certainly have been looking to do to do uh, volunteer work recently. Yeah, It just goes to show you, he, he sees when we're trying to do good, when we're trying to do something, and he helps uh, now we're on to Psalms 18.6. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. This is what he wants us to do. Oftentimes we're in distressing situations, hopefully not every single day. But yeah, I cry to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. When we, Sometimes he wants us to be low. He wants us to, to be humble. He wants our problems to get so great and to accumulate to such a degree that we think, ah, I've had enough. I'm putting all my problems at the cross. And that's what we should all be doing, putting our problems at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we don't, we can only play the tough guy for so long. There's been times in my life, two or three times that I can remember distinctly, when I've had nervous, I've, I literally had a nervous breakdown. I forget whether it was last year or the year before. It was probably the year before that. I went up to my room and I just broke down, crying, literally over and over. I mean, I was literally on my hands and knees, prostrate on, onto the floor, you know. And 
what what kept going through my head was all the bad things I've ever done, all the bad things I've ever said, and. <laughs> You know, I was literally asking him to reach out and touch me or, or, or like, appear in front of me. That's how desperate I wanted to be so close to him. But nothing appeared in front of me. No angel appeared in front of me. Jesus didn't appear in front of me. Yet the tears were going down my face. I was in such a state. You know, I can only hope and pray that my my neighbours didn't hear me. I wasn't overly loud or anything, but it was quite something. That's, That's a real nervous breakdown. I was stressed. It was shortly after I'd fell out with my neighbour. Uh, at the time, I mean, I didn't even have my first relationship yet at the age of 34. Wow, I mean, that's quite an experience. And that's what Psalms 18.6 reminded me of. Let me read that again. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. That's what it reminded me of when I read that passage. Yes, I did have a nervous breakdown. I think it must have been two years ago or so now. I think I was 33, probably. About about 33, I think I was. Yeah, it, it was... My word, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I mean, it was like... If you've ever been at your lowest ebb, where you literally just break down and all sense of sinful pride leaves you, and, yeah, it was just on another level. I never had a nervous breakdown like that before in all my life. It was really, really bad. But some good came of it, I'm sure, because despite my sin and everything, and and obviously I'm just a fallen man, but nonetheless, it was a humbling experience. But none of my friends or family would like to see me when I was in that state. I mean, you just... I couldn't even begin to describe it. Anyway, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances... For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, I believe that is the last verse. Uh, That was 10 verses I read. And it was from a site called Walk in Love, 10 verses about prayer. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Now, what can I say to finish off this video? First and foremost, I'd like to thank you so, so much if you've watched it until this point. Because most of the people that watch my videos, I know because I look at the analytics on my YouTube channel, (laughs) they only watch it for a few minutes. Maybe the average is about four or five minutes on most of my videos, then they switch it off. So I hope, I mean, I thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, again, if there's anything you want me to pray about, any life problems, I don't care what it is. You could be a Satanist right now watching this video. You could be anyone. You could be an atheist. I'll pray for you anyway. Um... I pray for anyone and everyone, just leave it down below in the comments section and pray for me as well. And feel free to ask me personal questions about my life. Okay, so I can further elaborate on things I've said about myself. Perhaps you're a little bit interested in where I'm coming from or what sort of life I've lived or whatever. But remember, God always answers prayer. Sometimes he answers them decades away, years and years away from the moment we're praying them. He hears what we're saying, but he doesn't work in our time frame. He doesn't rush around and says, oh, this person's prayed for that. I've, I've, got, I've got to sort that person out right now. I've got, to, I've got to sort that lady out who lives down the street. You know, he doesn't, he's not the sort of God where we snap our fingers and he just comes running straight away. And like I said earlier on, he puts us in different situations, different circumstances, and it's up to us how we deal with that. We can yield to Satan and listen to him. Or we can yield to God and listen to him. We have the Bible, we have prayer, we have repentance, we have worship. We have many, many weapons that have been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, by God himself. He's given us these weapons to use against the enemy. It's up to us how we use them. Now, once I've stopped recording this video, I'm going to go upstairs, fall on my hands and knees. I'm going to pray for my YouTube channel. I'm going to pray for as many viewers as possible to come for the sake of the glory of God. And as many likes, subscribers and comments... And uh, I pray for him to give me new, fresh ideas for different videos. I was thinking of doing a video on the Euphrates River because that's drying up. Uh, And there's a prophecy in the Bible, I believe it's in the book of Revelation, but I'm going to have to double check that about once that river's fully dried up, there's going to be four angels that have been chained underneath there that are going to be set free. And then the kings from the east, I'm guessing China, are going to march over that, uh, that, that, that barrier, so to speak. 
and a third of the world is going to be wiped out. That's roughly 50% of the world's population. That's been weighing on my mind as well. But who's to say when that Euphrates River is going to fully dry up? In the year 2020, just two years ago, it was fine, but now it's dried up in various places. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Perhaps I will do a video on it. Perhaps I won't. It depends. Anyway, that's just one of the things that's on my mind at the moment. So again, thank you so, so much for tuning in. And yeah, um, if you've got anything to add about prayer, the power of prayer, and if you want to talk to me about how you pray uh, and all the different ways that you, are, you, my viewer, pray, then tell me about it down below because I'd be very interested to hear because we can all learn from one another. We can all learn about prayer and interceding and supplicating and that. So uh, I hope and pray you have a good day. Thank you for watching. Take care and bye-bye.